In Ohio, there's no specific state law that prohibits a defendant convicted of a misdemeanor domestic violence offense from possessing or purchasing a firearm or ammunition. However, if a court issues a domestic violence protection order against the defendant, then it's illegal for them to purchase or possess a firearm or ammunition. That's according to Wolf and Mott Law Group. We're breaking down domestic violence and the gun laws in our big story today. Ohio Democrats say they hope to push a series of bills addressing gun violence in the new year. One would close a loophole that allows domestic abusers to have access to guns. 13 Action News reporter Josh Krupp is live this afternoon to break down their side of the plan. Josh. Tony, of course, Republicans control both chambers of the state legislature, but Senate Democrats call their ideas common sense and say they're optimistic that they can make progress on getting them to the governor's desk in 2024. They're introducing a couple of bills aimed at incentivizing safe gun storage, also laying out plans to introduce a bill to keep guns out of the hands of domestic abusers. Their proposal here would prohibit somebody charged with or convicted of misdemeanor domestic violence from having a gun. They say that's already the federal law, but it's not state law, which creates a loophole that lawmakers say can allow abusers to get firearms. This legislation, as well as the others that we've talked about, will save lives of women, families, and law enforcement in Ohio. These are preventative measures we could take that are common sense. And guys, on the other side of the aisle, Republicans right now are working on a bill that would block local police from enforcing federal gun laws. It right now is stalled as it awaits a vote on the full House floor. Tony. So Josh, how do Democrats expect to get those bills passed while Republicans are actually in control of the legislature? Yeah, and they say that they've worked with uh, various stakeholders here as, they, as they've created these bills from the NRA to Moms Demand Action, but they recognize it's a long shot. But Tony, they also say that doesn't mean that it's not worth it at least trying in their mind, adding they are optimistic they can get some bipartisan buy-in as we head into this new year. All right, thanks, Josh. Meanwhile, the Ohio Domestic Violence Network released data showing that more and more children are dying as a result of domestic violence. And in most domestic violence cases, the perpetrator is the child's parent. For the last eight years, the ODVN has been counting domestic violence-related fatalities throughout Ohio. The latest report came out in October. And while the number of fatalities has stayed the same, the findings show that the number of children killed is the highest that it's ever been. The report shows 22 children were among 112 people across the state who died in domestic violence incidents between July 1st of 2022 and June 30th of 2023. With Ohio debating whether to allow people with a domestic violence protection order to have guns, some are speaking out, saying things need to change. In Camden, Ohio, the Elliott family is one example of why the court's decision could mean the difference between life and death. Kelly Elliott had been abused by her husband for years she got a protection order against him, but it did not stop him from owning a gun. That gun he used to shoot and kill Kelly's children, and then he eventually turned it on, on himself. Often, the abuser doesn't kill his victim. He kills the children and himself, because what is the best way to hurt the mother of his children? To kill the children. She is saying that the tragedies could have been preventable. A domestic violence in the southwest corner of Ohio, a big issue. Right now, one of the measures keeping victims safe is a protection order that can be issued by a court. But despite the penalties associated with that slip of paper, the problems still persist. In each of the last seven years, Hamilton County alone, which is where Cincinnati is located, has seen more than 2,000 domestic violence charges filed with the clerk of courts. One state representative has pushed for legislation to address what they call continued issues with domestic violence, once again looking to introduce Aisha's law, which previously passed the Ohio House and then stalled in the Ohio Senate. That law creates a new temporary emergency protection order that an individual can request outside of the court's normal business hours. It would also provide training so that officers are able to better connect domestic violence victims with advocacy services. You promote it. Um, you try and diffuse the problem before it happens. And I think we're working more on getting therapy for people, on getting help for people, on helping women and men get out of this situation and escaping. Those who have opposed Aisha's law in the past argue that it violates the Constitution and allows hearsay evidence in court. 
As part of Aisha's law, representatives would also like to see a committee form to study the protection of domestic violence cases. One woman in a domestic violence situation says she took all the classes on domestic violence and parenting support, but the efforts did not help. She says there needs to be more resources for victims and more beds available at shelters. I was the woman, there was nowhere for me to go. I left, to go, I had to leave Cincinnati, Ohio, to find somewhere to be safe. Because they were all full? They were all full. And you can notice that this is popping up on national levels as well. Yeah, this is the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It has some wait times because it says the service is experiencing unusually high call chat volume. It's all according to the National Domestic Violence Hotline. An average of 24 people per minute are victims of rape, physical violence, or stalking by an intimate partner in this country. Those statistics, times of the essence, and wasted time is something many victims are not able to afford. Some states outside of Ohio are stepping up their support for those in a domestic violence situation. In November, Michigan's governor signed the Crime Victims' Rights Bills to boost access to support services for victims of domestic and sexual violence. The bills are meant to prevent those who are convicted of domestic violence crimes, which now includes misdemeanors, from purchasing or owning a gun for eight years. Those who support the bill say it is a step that could save lives. Perpetrators of violence um, can create violence in any number of ways, with any number of tools. But this does take away the deadliest tool from those who have already proven themselves to be unsafe. The laws also allow blurring of the faces of victims in court. Update the state's criminal code to better protect health care workers and allow victims to testify remotely in court. And that would lessen re-traumatization or retribution to the victims who are giving impact statements. Right now, there are 71 organizations across the state of Michigan providing domestic violence services at some level. That's according to DomesticShelters.org. But through that website, survivors can also find domestic violence programs across the state. The most common category of service in Michigan is what's called support services, with the two most common individual services being a look for resources and referrals, as well as goal planning assistance. So if you would like to find more about what's available for those victims of domestic violence in Michigan and whether there's a service available in your area, we'll be posting a link on 13abc.com. The National Coalition Against Domestic Violence shows on average nearly 20 people per minute in the U.S. are physically abused by an intimate partner. In one year, that equals more than 10 million women and men. The organization goes on to say the presence of guns in a domestic violence situation increases the risk of homicide by 500 percent. And Michigan State Police explain that domestic violence is a pattern of learned behavior in which one person uses physical, sexual, and emotional abuse to control another person. Under Michigan law, domestic violence is a misdemeanor, publishable, punishable, that is, by up to 93 days in jail or a $500 fine. So what can you do to help? Michigan State Police say being educated about domestic violence and letting go of any expectations you have that there is a quick fix, that's something you can do. Also, avoid victim blaming and making judgments, plus listen to what the survivor's telling you. Overall, if you want to help, be patient and respectful, even if you don't agree with something. Often the best source of help and information is a local program. In Lucas County, that includes places like Action Ohio Coalition for Battered Women. The Domestic Violence Empowerment Group is another option, and the YWCA of Northwest Ohio. We have a link to all of those programs on 13abc.com. And just a reminder, if you need more information, you can watch the entire big story by downloading the 13 Action News app. It is available as a download for free in your phone's app store.